we are doing my October monthly reset vlog. We are going to be setting up my Notion for October. I know, it's new. I don't know if it's a permanent change, but I basically have switched from using my book bullet journal to using Notion. So we will go through all the different pages that I have for Notion and we're going to spookify it for spooky season. As we typically do, we're gonna clean up the house, make sure everything is all just like nice and reset. I would like to get a couple more pumpkins. I have decorated a little bit for spooky season with my spooky pillows, but I want a couple more decorations. So we're gonna be doing that. And we're also gonna go through my October TBR. The last goal that I have for this vlog, I'm currently listening to Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher. Although these vlogs aren't typically super heavy reading vlogs, they're much more like productivity, cleaning, getting set up vlogs. I would like to give some thoughts on Thorn Hedge by T. Kingfisher because it's a four hour audiobook. My hold came in for it today and it just seemed kismet to start it and listen to it while I'm being productive for the day. So I will catch up with y'all in a little bit with a reading update. Talk soon. <laughs> one third of the way through Thornhedge check-in and I'm really trying to figure out the best way to summarize this book. It is the most charming fairy tale-esque story. It's very goblin core, it's very cottage core, it does take place, it's a low fantasy between fairy and the human world which we absolutely love. In this story there is a curse and there's a princess trapped in a tower but this is not her story. I'm trying to figure out like what the best way to describe her is. Our main character's name is Toadling. She was born a human, kidnapped by fairies, and raised in fairy, and she had a very lovely childhood. But when she came into adulthood, the fairies asked her to return to the human world and offer a blessing of protection to a newborn child, which sounded very simple. She agreed to it, but fairy deals are never simple. So centuries later, she is still there. There's still a little girl trapped in a tower. I think that the human girl has been like aging normally. So maybe she's not a little girl anymore. She's just like a normal human trapped in a tower and a knight comes along trying to break this curse. He's heard there's a curse here that needs breaking, but it's a curse Toadling will do anything to uphold. She's able to shift between a human form and a toad form, which is why they call her Toadling. And the knight that comes across her calls her Mistress Toadling. And it is just hysterical, cute, charming. The only other book that I've read by T. Kingfisher is What Moves the Dead which is a totally different genre, like everything from this book. That is a Edgar Allan Poe retelling. Really good for spooky season though, highly recommend it. I just think it's incredible the range of books, the range of genres that T. Kingfisher writes. I still really, really need to read A House With Good Bones by T. Kingfisher, and also I have been dying to read Sword Heart by T. Kingfisher. I've heard amazing things about that fantasy, I think it's a series, fantasy series that she's, she wrote, and they all kind of have this like lighthearted, fairly whimsical air about them, but I've heard that Sword Heart is hysterical. All of this to say, I'm enjoying my book. I really like T. Kingfisher's writing. I would love to read more from her. That is the update. Sorry, quick correction, because I misspoke. Sword Heart is a standalone. Paladin's Grace is the series that I heard of from Kingfisher. It's the Saint of Steel series that I've heard is absolutely hysterical and a delightful, entertaining read. And so I need to read that one as well. Okay, I'll stop talking about T. Kingfisher now.
friends. I just got back from TJ Maxx. You would have seen lots of beautiful pumpkins. There were super cute like acorns and then there was a ton of super adorable mugs and obviously we had to pay a visit to the candle section as well. I didn't end up getting anything. I think what happened was there was a bunch of cute stuff. However, I didn't decide beforehand where I wanted a couple like more pumpkins and fall decorations and things like that. So I got very overwhelmed that I didn't know what I was looking for and that I would like get the wrong thing. So I didn't buy anything, but it was really fun to just go and look around. The harvest decor is usually more of my vibe as opposed to true like spooky spooky season with like ghosts and skeletons and all of that stuff, even though it's absolutely adorable. I have a couple things that are like true spooky season, but for the most part, I try to go for like neutral pumpkins and stuff like that. I do want to find a cute like leaf garland to do something with around my bookshelf area, whether I put it like underneath the TV or I hang it on the lights that I have on my bookshelves. I think that that would be really cute. But unfortunately, I don't think TJ Maxx was really hitting this time around. I might go to Target. I did go to Target at the beginning of this vlog. I have a problem, but I got pumpkin oat milk creamer for my coffees, which is stunning so i can try to stop going to starbucks every day of my life to get theirs even though i've been living off of iced dirty chais with two pumps of pumpkin that's been my absolute favorite thing in the whole world but i need to try to start making more coffee at home i've been going off the rails with my starbucks addiction and i also got the pillsbury ghost cookies other than that i have some final thoughts to give you on thorn hedge i did finish it I loved it. I thought it was so cute. Lately, I've been reading a lot of shorter fantasies slash fantasy romances that are novella sized, like 200, 250 pages. And they've just been doing something for me. And this one was no exception. It was the briefest, most delightful story. I will try not to say charming, but I do think that it was so absolutely charming, but I've said charming a million times now. The characters, the overall plot even though it's short sweet brief to the point in the best way i i couldn't have asked anything more of that story i thought it was just so much fun to listen to so much fun to read i would have liked to hear more behind why mistress toadling was the way that she was and same thing with this human changeling princess that was cursed i wanted a little bit more understanding as to that dynamic it was a little bit confusing however if you want a story that you don't have to think too hard about that's super cute very fairy tale-esque almost like a reverse fairy tale in a way highly recommend i think i'm gonna give it four stars i've added a couple t kingfisher books to my amazon cart i'm trying to hold off buying more books because I have so many books I need to read for October that I think buying more books is just going to stress me until I get through like what I want to read, what I need to read. So we'll see how that goes. I'm putting some final touches on my October TBR before we talk through that. But let's jump into updating my Notion because I think that's going to be a really fun time and it's gonna get me in the planning mood which will help me to make decisions, the tough decisions for my October TBR. I decided to switch to Notion because I was finding I was using the majority of my book bullet journal, reading bullet journal for content planning. And that was like the issue. I figured it would be easier to switch to an online planning platform. This sounds really sponsored and it's absolutely not. I was just explaining because bullet journal content has been such a staple on my channel and it still will be, maybe just a little bit less frequently. I have put chapters for this video so that way if you don't wanna go through like my Notion section with me, that's totally fine. The next section after this will be my October TBR. So all I'm doing is adjusting it to feel much more folly. I'm changing all of the colors and the emojis and the text and things like that. I go through Pinterest. That's where I find almost all of my images. And I'm setting up some of my screens. So I have like a home page, like a landing page on here. That little widget that you see with Isabel from Animal Crossing falling asleep, that is a Animal Crossing like music player. 
So it plays doot doot music from Animal Crossing, which we love. It also has a Pomodoro timer in it as well. So I love to use that. You guys know I love like time blocking and using Pomodoro timers. So that was super helpful. And then I have a couple other pages. So I have a calendar and weekly spread in my Notion. I have a content ideas page. I have my library where I put a list of all of my physical TBR. And it's so nice because you can sort it by genre. I added some other columns to decide whether I want to haul or like unhaul books, things like that. I'm just going through a little bit slower so I've already like updated everything. I know I went through what I was updating super fast and just like downloading images from Pinterest and stuff like that. But this is the slower peek at my Notion. Please let me know in the comments down below if you like to see this. I feel like a lot of us do like the planning content, but I wasn't sure if it was only because it was like reading bullet journal or if you would like some Notion updates. I'm probably gonna update it seasonally to like update how it looks. And then if I add more pages and stuff like that, we can continue to go through it. So please let me know. I love to hear your feedback. Okay, I think I'm ready to go through my October TBR. This is a very hefty TBR. I, kind, I just have a lot of books that are potential reads for me. These are all hopefuls, although I will probably prioritize some of these and I'll let you know which ones I'm going to prioritize. I feel like I'm going to tell you that I'm gonna prioritize all of them though. So let's just see how this goes. The first book that I'm planning to read for October is Bewitched by Laura Thalassa. My friend Katie from Katie's Book Nook read this during our most recent 48 hour romance a and absolutely loved it and recommended it so she's on the list it's a witchy fantasy romance that has ancient evil magic and a witch school and i think an unreliable narrator at some points so i'm excited for bewitched this is one of my most anticipated books that i can't wait to read in october Blood and Steel by Helen Schurer. I think I've said this a million times, but in September, I read Slaying the Shadow Prince by Helen Schurer, fell in love with her writing style, and immediately ordered this book. Also, the second book in this series just came out, the Legends of Thesmar series. Can't sink and wait. Another fantasy romance, A Study in Drowning by Ava Reed. This just came out. Haunted House paranormal YA romance. It sounds like it could be a perfect atmospheric fall read and so I'm really curious to how it's gonna play out because I'm not gonna read the synopsis for this. The synopsis is slightly confusing and so I hope that as I read it we will get more clarification. A study in drowning. Next up we have these beauties. This is the Nightborn duet by Carissa Broadbent. I just last night finished reading Slaying the Vampire Conqueror, which takes place in this world. It has made me so excited to read these books. I was already excited because everyone has been reading this duet recently in the past couple months and screaming about it. So many people have told me I need to read the series. I've been saving these for October. I've been really trying to hold out. I actually did it, so I'm really proud of myself because these are vampire fan row books and I wanted all of the vampire fan row for October. So these are my physical TBR. I have a couple books as well that I hauled in the most recent Stuff Your Kindle Day. The first being Blood Price by Vela Roth. Vela Roth is an author who's been on my radar, but the fact that Blood Mercy is set over 700 pages, it's a vampire fantasy romance that everyone has been reading and loving, that really scares me. And I've also heard that the writing style is a little bit difficult. And most people say, please get the audiobook for Blood Mercy. So I wanted to start with Blood Price because Blood Price is the 0.5 book to the like Blood Mercy series. I'm not sure what the actual name of it is. Blood Grace or something like that series. Um, it's the 0.5 book and it's only 300 pages. So I thought it would be a good way to introduce myself to the world, introduce myself to the writing style and figure from there if I want to continue with the series. Then we have Death of the Dawn by Amanda King another vampire book. 
there is a theme here. Another vampire book. This is supposed to be, I think, a YA. However, I started reading it last night. I'm only two chapters in, so very, very beginning. But it's a bit brutal, and it's giving you vampire in, a, in the very classic sense of vampire, like locked away in a crypt, woken up by blood, like a blood sacrifice, an unintentional blood sacrifice, escapes his eternal resting place, and just starts feasting on people. So it's a bit brutal, it's violent. I really enjoy seeing how different authors portray vampires because some books they're extremely romanticized and in others they're portrayed as an actual monster so anyways i think that it's really interesting i really am enjoying the writing style on this one so far it's definitely portraying vampires much more in the traditional monster sense but i should finish death of the dawn in october another vampire book heart of dracula by katherine kingsley if i'm entirely honest I don't remember the summary for this book, but it has fairly high ratings on Goodreads, and it's not a newly published. I think it's been out for a couple years. It's an entire series, so I was very intrigued, and I will be reading it. Next up is Song of the Marked by S.M. Gaither. I'm not gonna lie, reading the synopsis of this, it sounds like it's giving Throne of Glass vibes. So we have a world where the old gods are growing restless. Our main girly pop is a ruthless mercenary. She really only cares about getting her current job done, making a bunch of money. She's using the money and like the jobs that she's doing to get this really expensive medicine for her mentor who is in ill health. The king commands her to investigate this really weird plague that begins devastating the empire and even she can't resist the massive reward he offers, even if it does mean working with the arrogant, infuriating Captain Ellender. But as the death toll rises, strange monsters wreak havoc across the realms. Cass and Ellender find themselves up against meddling gods and very old magic. It sounds really, really cool. I bought the ebook for it, but honestly, I might buy the physical copy for this book as well. So I think, I think that's nine books in total. Those are the nine books that are really all top priority. Hey, see, I told you I was gonna do this. I try to give myself a little bit of wiggle room with the TBR and not put an extensive amount of books on there so that I could like mood read a little bit. Um, October, I didn't really give myself a lot of room to do that, but we'll see how it goes. And the other thing is I'm very excited to read all of these books. So similar to September, I set quite a hefty TBR for myself. I, for the most part, stuck to it pretty closely. With that, my friends, I'm going to end the vlog here. I hope that you enjoyed. If you're looking for more from me, I have a bunch of links in the description box below. I have a fantasy romance book club on Fable. I have my Instagram. I have been Goodreads. I will catch you in the comments and I will see you in my next one, friends. Bye.